You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who Art Ed? Try to spice it. Who Art Ed? Mr. Wood, Art Ed, me. <laughs> yeah. Either way, it, it's a big, it works on so many levels. I know. I thought it was a great start. Welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and today we're looking at cause. Cause, spelled K-A-W-S, is the name adopted by the artist Brian Donnelly. Donnelly was born November 4th, 1974, in Jersey City, New Jersey. As a teenager in the 1990s, Donnelly adopted the name Cause. He says he just liked the way the letters looked together, claims there's no deeper meaning to it. While as a teenager, he may have come up with this pseudonym with no deeper meaning, I'm sure he did start to think a little bit more deeply about art as he got his BFA from the School of Visual Arts in New York. He became a freelance animator. As an animator, he worked with Jumbo Pictures. He did some of the backgrounds on shows like Doug and Daria, which were two of my favorite cartoons growing up in the 90s. During this time, he was making backgrounds for cartoons, but he was also making his own art at night. He was making graffiti, mostly what we would call subvertisements in bus shelters. They were basically like spoofs of the ads. They were a little bit subversive, subvertisements, subversive, get it? In the late 1990s, the 2000s, a lot of culture basically shifted towards remixes. A lot of work is deliberately referencing or commenting on other other aspects of culture. Cause was doing this in his graffiti and then in other works on canvas, like the Clemsons. It's basically a parody, sort of extension of the pop art movement. He's taking things that are very, very well known, but then changing some elements. He's reframing it to get people to see it and consider it in a new light. His iconic figure, which has been painted, sculpted, sold as toys, it's based on Mickey Mouse, but with X's on the eyes and a bone shape replacing the ears. I think this is an interesting reference, given that he worked in animation first on Doug, which was so earnest, and then on Daria, which had a tone that was cynical and sarcastic, yet in some ways an earnest depiction of the world through the lens of a teenager. You know, one of the first bits of advice that writers are often given is to write what you know. And I think in the creative process... In other media as well, you start off by looking at things that are the familiar subjects. And so it seems perfectly appropriate for Cause to have started off in that animation world and then to use animation references in developing his own work and his unique style. In 2005, Cause created the Cause album. This feels like it is just culture eating itself (laughs) because in here it is level upon level of reference cause created the clemsons which was a parody of the simpsons he put x's over the eyes and a few other stylistic shifts so he's got his parody and the simpsons had done their own parody of the beatles sergeant pepper's album cover So this is his parody of someone else's parody of another pop culture image. And this is where it becomes like next level bananas. It sold for $14.8 million. A figure that even Cause himself has been known to say was way too expensive. And if you want to learn more about ridiculously overpriced art, I will link episodes in the show notes about the guy who sold the idea of taping a banana to a wall and the guy who accepted payment from a museum, then delivered blank canvases in a conceptual artwork he titled Take the Money and Run. So while $14.8 million may seem like an absurd amount of money to pay for a painting of someone else's drawing of someone else's album cover, at least he actually made something. If you're enjoying Who Arted? Weekly Art History for All Ages, you might enjoy my other podcast, 
ArtSmart as well. ArtSmart is going to be starting Season 3 on Wednesday, February 1st. For this season, I'm going to have a series of episodes focusing on different media. Each episode is going to tell a little story about the medium, and I interviewed experts in the field to learn how those different media are produced and how we can make the most of them in the studio. So if you want to learn more about different art materials, where they came from, and how to use them, check out ArtSmart on your favorite podcast app. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, on the website, whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.